This is just a quick tutorial on how to do a few simple animations. I'm in a new file here. Uh, first of all, this is Flash CC, so if you had an older version of Flash, you might notice it looks a little different. Um, the, the interface is darker, and uh, you might notice that. Um, but pretty much most of this stuff is pretty similar to earlier versions. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Just a nice fast frame rate so I'll have smooth animation. Um, so what I'm going to show is just a little bit of simple frame by frame animation. So one thing I want to do is just show like uh, let's animate an egg cracking. So I'm just going to do some basic graphics. I mean you can do graphics any way you want but I'm just going to draw. Um, I have a Wacom pen tool hooked up to my computer right now and uh, I'm just going to use this to draw and uh, just to do something kind of quick here. So I'm in frame one down here and as soon as I start to draw it'll create a keyframe. So I'm just going to start off with a, uh, let's see, I made my egg circle here. Let's see. Um, actually I'm going to use the uh, brush tool instead of the pencil tool. Let's see what kind of line I get. Yeah, that's good, but uh, let's change the color. I'll just do like a dark gray. Um, so I'm going to draw sort of an egg shape here. And I'm just going to do a simple sort of the way Disney used to do animations. They kind of use computers more now, but just uh, from one frame to the next, you're changing the graphic and changing it. I'll start off by just doing this one frame after the next, and this will be too fast but we'll, we'll be able to fix that so what I'm going to do is on the next frame I'm going to um, right click here and you can't see it it's off screen but there's an option insert blank keyframe keyframe um, you can also have it up here insert timeline blank keyframe um, so now we have a new um, blank keyframe uh, one thing we can do which sometimes can make animation a little bit easier remember the animators used to flip between pages and they could see what they had just drawn and and kind of do what the next drawing or they had like the thin tracing paper well what we have is called uh, onion skin so this button down in the bottom with two squares two hollow squares you click that um, you have a box you can drag for how many frames you want to see at once but I'm on frame two but it's actually showing me kind of lightly behind what's in frame one. That can be kind of helpful sometimes. Um, but I'm going to turn that off for the moment. Um, I kind of remember where it is, but I'm just going to do a start to uh, break this egg. So maybe I'll have another shot of the egg, but then I'll draw a little bit of a crack starting so we can flip back and forth. And it's not perfect. If I had used that onion skin, I could make sort of the uh, or if I just drew a, a shape out here, I could kind of copy and paste that from frame to frame and get something a little more neater. But I'm just doing kind of a rough animation here. So I'm going to do uh, insert blank keyframe again. And actually this time I might turn on the onion skinning to kind of keep it close. So those are just little outlines there. But what I'm drawing is going to go into frame 3. So I'm going to break this egg up a little bit more. Kind of like maybe split it in half some. And then I might have a little bit of that yolk starting to come there, come out. And then I'll jump to frame four. And I can drag my, let's see, right click, insert blank keyframe. And you'll notice my onion skin. Now this onion skin, you can kind of, like I said, you can tell it how many frames you want to see at once. Um, and then the next frame here, I might have the... You know, the egg might be a little, totally split now. And your yolk is totally coming out. And I could use a different color. Um, why don't we go ahead and do that? And we can, you know, we can draw some egg yolk in there. Could even on the previous frame. Oops. It's up here a little bit, maybe. So I'm going to turn the onion skinning off now. And you see, like, basic here, you have, it's, it's almost like your flip book. If you ever did, did, tried to do a little flip book, 
you have this kind of simple animation of the egg getting cracked and the yolk coming down. You can kind of continue this as much as you need to. And like I said, you're not limited. You don't have to draw these. Um, you can use any of the shape for vector tools, a pen tool. You can use uh, vector graphics or raster graphics. You can do anything you want. So if I test this movie, um, I'm going to hit on my Mac command enter or on a PC it's control enter or control return and you'll see that it's animating but it's super super fast. Well that's because we got 30 frames per second which is pretty quick and we only have a few frames here. So all we have to do is just spread this out. Maybe we want um, a different frame every 10 frames. So we have four I can drag this out to 40. I can drag this one out to 30. I can drag this one to 20. Oops, I got one too many here. So I can put this right like on 10, or maybe that's 11 there. Let's see, 10, 20, 30, and then that one will show for 10 frames. So now if I test my movie, you got something that might be a little more reasonable. And you can time this. Basically, the more spread out there will be, the, the longer it is between frames and the longer it'll take. But it might start look, to look choppy, kind of depending on what you're doing. Um, another quick example. Um, maybe we have something like a... Oops, let me change my color back. Maybe I just have a blender. And this is sort of just a basic blender. Um, there's a couple different ways we could do this. We could maybe keep that blender in one layer and then animate the stuff inside of it moving around. Or maybe we can do a little bit of both, move the blender or move the, um, the stuff inside getting blended up. Um, Maybe we can do a little bit of both. Um, I'd like the blender to kind of shake a little bit. Uh, what we could do is use, um, kind of move it back and forth a little bit and use uh, classic tweens maybe. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to insert a keyframe here. Um, right right click, insert keyframe. This time I did blank keyframes before. When I insert a keyframe this time, uh, if you do an insert keyframe, it'll actually duplicate whatever you had there before. But it's a new keyframe, so we can change it and do different things with it if we want to. So maybe in this keyframe, um, I might take... Oops, I have it locked there. I'm just going to select the whole graphic here and use the free transform tool to kind of rotate it this way a little bit. And then on this one, I'm going to rotate it kind of that way a little bit. And then this one, I'm going to put it back to the start. And what you can do is you, if you, you can right click and um, create classic tween. And what that does is it animates. Well, I got actually, there's a little bit of a problem here I forgot about. It is animating, um, sort of, but I, these really need to be a symbol for this to work properly. So let me. Let me go back a couple steps. So I'm going to undo all this stuff I did here. I'm just hitting Command Z on my Mac or Control Z is undo. So now I'm kind of back where I started. Um, this time before I do all that, I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to right click this graphic and convert to symbol. And I'm going to call this Blender. Um, that way I can do a tween on it. I, was forgetting that uh, we have to do that. Um, it can be a graphic symbol, that's fine. And then I'll do everything I just did before. So insert keyframe. Um, let's see. Insert keyframe. Insert keyframe. So this one, I'm going to rotate this way a little bit. This one, I'm going to rotate the other way a little bit. And this one I'll leave alone. And then right click, create classic tween, create. And you'll see actually what it does is it animates from this frame to this frame. So it's kind of going that way. And we can do classic tween, classic tween. 
and here it doesn't really move so I guess it doesn't need one so that's kind of jiggling there and if we we ran that you know we kind of are simulating some motion here um, we also I mean there's so many different ways you could do this but let's say we wanted to have um, that could be one way to show it or let's um, let's actually undo I'm going to undo some more. This time I'm just going to leave the blender stable, not moving, and I'm going to put some contents in it that is doing some stuff. So um, let's say we're blending up some nice blue stuff. Um, I'm not going to get too complicated with here, but basically I'm just going to kind of create some stuff in here. Oops, got a little too far there off with my pen. Um, and this could be pretty simple. Oops, I scrolled over. Uh, I'm just going to go to maybe frame 5. I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert a blank keyframe. And this one I'm just going to draw, draw it again. And it's going to be different because I can't draw the exact same thing exactly. So, um, You'll see that between frames one and five, you know, if we just repeated that, it's going to look like that stuff's getting blended up in there. So what I could do is actually copy these keyframes. One easy way to do this is make sure you click just that single keyframe. On the Mac, it's the Option key. On the PC, it's the Alt key. Um, hold that down, then click and drag, and you'll actually duplicate that keyframe over there. And then I can take this one. Duplicate, duplicate that over there. I could actually select a couple of these and duplicate them both at the same time. So hold, hold Alt or Option, copy them both over there, and it should get both of them. So there, let's test our movie. You know, we kind of have a blending effect, and that's pretty easy to do. Um, one final thing I want to show you, which you can do with tweens, is let's say you have a symbol, and actually you could animate inside of the symbol. That's getting a little more complex. Like if we, uh, this is a symbol now, you could go inside of that symbol, and um, I actually accidentally made this a button when I first made it. Um, I can fix that. I should have made it a graphic symbol to begin with, but. Um, but I can go into that symbol, and you can tell from this bar up here that now I'm in a separate timeline. You can actually animate within there, and then have it on the main timeline, and it would animate. Um, besides that, that's kind of complicated, though. But um, one simple thing we might do as well to show some animation is just a simple tween movement of some sort. So maybe the blender comes into the scene, perhaps. So I'm going to... Um, actually start the blender off stage here and by the end here I want it to be on stage so maybe this is like the camera panning across or something like that um, you can use classic tweens or motion tweens I guess I can show each method the classic tween method you set up the keyframes first so I right click insert keyframe and then change the keyframe somehow and then right click create classic tween and you get it fills in the in-between basically. Now I'm going to undo that and do it the uh, motion tween method. Uh, with the motion tween you just right click do the motion tween and it turns blue color. You go to the point in the timeline where you want it to um, create a keyframe or do something with and then you move your object and then it creates a littler dot which is a keyframe also and it um, will move it to that spot. Um, you could also, like if you had it go up a little bit or something in between, you know, you could do something like that. We could also, let's say we wanted to zoom in on the object, you could use either classic or motion tweens. Let's uh, put it in the center of the screen and maybe we're just zooming in to, to the scene to create some interest. Um, so let's say we start here and we're kind of, uh, or maybe we make it even a little smaller. So I'll use that transform tool up here and we're going to zoom in. So we can either 
right click, insert keyframe, and then change the keyframe, right click, classic tween. There we have our zoom, or let me undo that. We can right click, create motion tween, go to the last keyframe where we want stuff to happen. We can zoom in like that, does the same thing. Uh, we could also, maybe even in the first frame, we could go to properties and make sure we have that selected. We get our color effects. We have alpha, which is the opacity. We could actually turn the opacity down really low. Then as it gets bigger, uh, make sure you have the object selected. Go to alpha again, change that to 100%. So not only is it zooming, it's fading up in this case. So. Anyways, that's a few techniques that you might be able to use um, to do some simple animations.